The last thing on my list is giving you an update on the tornado. Um, one, I want to thank these guys. These guys are here tonight with about four hours of sleep over the last 48 hours. They have done an outstanding job keeping things up and running and covering my back, and I can't thank you guys enough for what you've done. Our, our staff has done an excellent job also, and hopefully the staff is watching our update tonight, and I want to thank the entire staff for everything that they've done over the last 48 hours. They've done an outstanding job. Uh, we were hit with an EF2, and that has been verified by the National Weather Service. EF2 basically means that we had sustained winds over 120 miles per hour. And just to give you an idea of 120 miles per hour, at about 50 miles an hour, you can stand and start leaning in, and it'll hold you up. Uh, so it was pretty substantial winds. Uh, I know all of you have pretty much toured the site and have been down there supporting us, and we greatly appreciate that. Uh, one thing, which I think Commissioner Anderson said at the beginning, uh, the trust that you have in us, I can't thank you enough for the trust that you have in us. You just let us do our job, and you have confidence that we're doing it right, and we appreciate that, and we see that. Scott, uh, how, how wide of a path did they determine this thing followed? It basically, uh, from what we're gathering, is it started as a water spout in the bay, basically hit about dead center of Bay City, after it entered Bay City, it started taking a northeast pat pattern through Bay City, came up on Route 8, right around the historic tree is where it exited and went straight down Route 8. The hollow out. historic tree. Yes. Yeah, the hollow, which who knew? <laughs> know, it was right? hollow the whole time. Yeah. Um, that, that's what happens to trees. Yeah. So uh, it went straight down Route 8 for about half a mile, took out Farmer John's. Uh, business. Melon. Cut yeah. across. Smash melons everywhere. Melon di yeah. distribution. Uh, cut across uh, Route 8. It went into the townhouse complex uh, in that area. Bounced over to Thompson Creek. Went down the edge of Thompson Creek. Hit a lot of the storefronts. Took out a lot of windows in that area. It bounced back and forth on 50 because you can see trees down on both sides as it bounced down 50 kind of went into the cemetery area, went straight down 18, took out all of our power lines on 18, and then it exited and headed towards Queenstown. And by the time it hit Queenstown, it was basically up in there, not really doing a whole lot of damage, but still we had some damage in Queenstown area also. Um, but that was a general path it took. Uh, at the end of it, it was about 15 to 20 minutes in duration uh, from start to finish. We had about 9,000 homes initially impacted along with businesses. Uh, Dave has uh, worked with damage assessment teams today, and they've had three teams out working in the community. The teams have determined as an approximate, uh, and more details to come on this, but we've had about 155 properties that were impacted by this, and 10 homes totally destroyed. Wow. Uh, from that, we've, um, we had a, a shelter operation that we opened up, which was in Centerville Middle School. We had five people that took advantage of that and stayed overnight at the, at the shelter. We received information that basically all the hotels in the area were booked, so we know all the residents hit the hotels in the area. Uh, we have two residents uh, that we require housing assistance, which Dave is currently working on, and we potentially have up to five residents that are gonna require that assistance. At peak, we had over 30 agencies engaged in rescue operations at the, at the peak of it, and that was about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, Ken Island Volunteer Fire Department was a primary commanding agency during the event, and we set up a unified command booth, and Paul Schlutterbach was the incident commander. And I think the, the first arriving officer was Tracy Schultz um, in this. Uh, we had a lot of difficulties with a lot of the responders because a lot of the responders were trapped and had to cut their way out to get to their emergency apparatus during this, which uh, kind of made a unique scenario for us. Uh, the amazing thing, uh, I had the opportunity to go up on Maryland State Police helicopter and actually do an aerial overview of the area. And I cannot tell you how lucky Queen Anne's County is. Uh, it looked like somebody steered the storm away from homes. 
And if you look at the path the storm took from the air, it like looked like it purposely dodged houses the way it went. And if you walk the grounds in the area, uh, it it did a lot of damage and significant damage in in um, with trees and going through people's yards. But it did a good job of avoiding homes. It did destroy a lot of homes and it did damage a lot of homes, but it could have been much, much worse than what it was. We had uh, only minor injuries from residents on scene. We only had one resident that had a full house collapse. I mean, a full house collapse. I know most of you have seen the house. It's unbelievable this guy walked out of his house, but he only had a small puncture wound on his back that we took. The toilet off. was still intact. Yes. <laughs> no water uh, leaks. That was amazing. Yeah. The, the whole house gone, but no water leaks. Congrats to the plumber to put that place in. <laughs> so, it, it was impressive, but they, uh, when the rescue cr crews arrived, they found him leaning up against his car, waiting for the rescue crews to get there. It, it was amazing, but I think he only required a couple stitches and he was released the same day. And that was the only substantial injury we had in this. It's incredible. Uh, we had no reports of injuries from our first responders, and we had well over 200 responders on scene throughout the event which is amazing that nobody was injured. Uh, we were really working in adverse uh, conditions throughout the event. Uh, so where, where do we stand right now? So where we stand right now is uh, Dave is putting us into the recovery phase. Um, and one thing that you need to be aware of, uh, recovery sounds like it's gonna be a short process. We probably will not be fully recovered from this storm for two years when everything is put back in place, rebuilt, and everything is final on us. It's probably gonna be two years from today. But Dave is starting today, so the clock is ticking to get your job done in two years. Uh, we have set up with the Maryland Insurance Administration, which is something else Dave was tasked with and took care of uh, today. But they are gonna be on site Thursday and Friday to help residents with insurance. We don't have the exact hours yet, but they're gonna be located at Matt Mattapique Elementary School uh, to help with insurance claims. We have demobilized the shelter. The shelter has been closed. The command center at site was closed at three o'clock today. We closed down our EOC and went back to normal operations at three o'clock also today. Uh, we had an ice water operation, which went down around three o'clock also today, uh, which Greg assisted us with in obtaining and uh, helping us staff, which was a huge help. Uh, and we, we got a tractor trailer load of ice, which about 50% of it was depleted by morning. So people did take advantage of it and it was a big help to get it there. Um, there are so many agencies to recognize and thank that helped, helped us in this, but there is a few that I wanna spend just a second to talk about. Uh, Ocean City Emergency Management has had a planner on site with us since the beginning. He basically, almost self-dispatched himself, uh, contacted Dave immediately, and he has been Dave's right-hand guy since the event started. Uh, but we've got nothing but thanks for everything that Ocean City Emergency Management has done for us. Maryland Emergency Management Agency has been there from the start, and we have had the director, Russ Strickland, on site basically from the start. Yes. And he has given us his full staff, his disposal, and has helped us in many, many ways, and he plans on being here throughout the week. Um, the biggest, biggest hero in this whole thing, uh, Delmarva Power, Bingo. has you. Wow. done a phenomenal Holy. job. And I cannot commend their staff anymore. I, they, they, they have just done a phenomenal job. Original estimates were two to five days to have full restoration. Um, and it, it, if you went down Route 18, and I'm sure you guys saw it, but if you went down Route 18, there was substantial damage. I have no idea how they got that up in 24 hours, or less than 24 hours. Typically five days to get those twisted poles out and others in and wire strong, and they did it in less than, what, 24 hours? Yes, it, it just did an incredible job. I went, I went down to the command center last night at about 8.30. It was just getting dark. And you could have walked across the trucks from Delmarva Power. They had so many of them on Route 18. They just had an incredible force come in and help. Um, but they have done a phenomenal job. And, and last on my list again is, is the DS staff. 
uh, I, I couldn't ask for better staff. I couldn't ask for a better command staff. Uh, you guys have done an excellent, excellent job. And one thing that has been different than any other event that I've experienced, these guys gave me the capability, which I've never had before, to be able to leave the emergency operations center and actually go out and do some field operations, which was a huge, huge help. And I think the storm really needed me out doing that. And I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't the support I had from these guys. Um, I do have a couple things I need to hit you on on your break okay. that we need to have answers on before we leave tonight. Okay. And that's that's all we got. Uh, Any questions for us? Well, yeah, just to comment, uh, two churches have come forward, uh, the Methodist Church uh, in Graysonville and Christ Church in Stevensville. Uh, there's money starting to come in from local and out of state uh, funds. Uh, if there is somebody that we can connect together with the insurance uh, meeting because there may be some people that need help on uh, the deductible part of their loss that uh, these uh, churches might be able to help fund. Well, we, we uh, well, currently our official, official, official donation site is Ken Island United Methodist has stepped up and, yeah. and said that they would assist with us. So they're the ones that we have publicized right now as the official donation site. And okay. they're gonna assist us with coordinating with the other churches in the area. Um, Christ Church but, is located in mere yards from yes. Ground Zero, and uh, the priest there called and wanted to let us know that the diocese from around the country wanted to send money to uh, the Episcopal Church, and I said, well, just don't tell them no, uh, but let's get this all coordinated, and uh, we'll get a name for you, and I guess David is as good as... already started, sir. That was, yes. that was this afternoon, the whole afternoon. Is, uh, we are coordinating uh, the response effort. Uh, we'll be meeting with other directors uh, with this county's agencies this uh, next first of next week. Uh, as far as donations, we've already approached that. Uh, I will make sure tomorrow that we contact the other church and make sure we get everybody on board. Yeah, it would be uh, uh, the priest's Father Mark Delacues okay. uh, at Christ Church in Stevensville. Take care of it in the morning. We have, we have had an overwhelming response for donations, an overwhelming response, money and well, material. I, I think it just speaks to the issue of community. You look at uh, our county people, but the volunteers muscled up and you know, left their houses uh, at, from Ken Island and got down you know, through the, the brambles and limbs and so forth and came out of their houses. Uh, you know, everybody assembled, but it took an organized plan and leadership to pull it all together. And that's why I stood when you guys came up here. Well, thank you very much. And, and we can't tell you how much we appreciate the support. Okay. So my only remark is, great, thanks. It's kind of what I expected. And you did it, so what more could you say? Might be a good idea if, if Delmarva went out of their way for the commissioners to write a note to Delmarva yeah. commending them from behalf of the commissioners and shoot it up as high into Delmarva as you can so the locals get a recognition. Uh, we can sign that next time, maybe. Anything else we ought to do? Did you, did you find anything we might have done or should have done or improvements or any, any thoughts? Or, well, there, there's always improvements. Um, so you, you spoke about traffic congestion. Yeah. And we spent a good 45 minutes to an hour discussing that before we decided exactly what we're going to do. Um, in, in every scenario, there's always things that you can do better. But I, I, I think one thing that really played out in this, um, that showed in this, and I think the public actually saw it on this one, is we have spent a lot of time doing drills, tabletop exercises, getting the group prepared to do exactly what we did. And we had a few hiccups, but I, I, I think everything went very, very smooth from start to finish. The, okay. the responders. So, so, so I think what I was asking, is there anything we ought to do? Because obviously if it's something internal. Any, anything that, that you ought to do? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, you provided support, you were there. Yeah, and but you know, I mean, 
did we need some piece of equipment? Is there, you know, if something comes up, don't hesitate, but well done. Well, the one I do have, um, and, and heard backup, it from a lot of people, and just kind of curious about it myself, is the actual notification time. Um, talking to some people, they said they actually didn't get it mm -hmm. until it was literally two minutes before they heard the freight train. Um, is do, do we know where that failure was? Because, I mean, I was in North County and got the tornado warning at about 1.45. So by the time it would have, if it had lasted that long, I would have had plenty of time. But, you know, some people were saying they got it at 127 and a half and there it well, was this, at 129. So. This, is, this is the problem with that. So that, that actual warning is pushed out by the National Weather Service. And if you have a cell phone, the cell phone gets activated and it's a, it's a geo-based system that identifies your location compared to where the storm is. It is a brand new system for the Weather Service and there are some Hiccups with it Obviously for one, glitches. Yeah, a few glitches, uh, and and not only did people get it on short notice, I also noticed on a lot of social media they said they heard the, the freight train and then got the warning. So, but I got it through uh, Queen Anne's County, and mine came. In my opinion, the one I got through the county came very timely. Well, the the one right, that you're getting from, from the county had the NWS one. The, the one you're getting from the county is still coming from the National Weather Service and it's tied through our Everbridge system. So whatever the National Weather Service is pushing out, it's almost an immediate push to us. Gotcha. So National Weather Service controls the whole thing and Mount Holly is our primary weather station and that's where we're getting alerts from. Um, that system will continually get better, but right now it is something that is semi-new the alerting part of it is something new on their side. And this, this probably maybe opened a few eyes to, they should expedite whatever finding the glitches well, in it. Well the, well, the other problem that we have on a tornado is, especially when it hits the ground, um, sometimes it's a, it's a quick <coughs> acting moment. And a lot of times you don't get a whole lot of notification. And, and one critique thing that we've had on our side is like setting off the sirens in a timely fashion. And so we're getting a notification from the weather service like about a minute before right. it's hitting. And then we've got to react within that minute and then set sirens off. And probably by the time we're setting the sirens off, it's sure there it or it's gone. But, you know, and it's funny. Well, it's not funny, but it's actually the week before, I think it was, you guys had sent out an alert up here and it was nothing. We didn't get rain or anything, but it was a severe thunderstorm warning. And so then fast forward to the tornado and people are saying, well, we didn't get it. Uh, to me, wouldn't it be better to err on the side of caution? Even when that storm was coming across and it was a red cell, if they saw anything, at least, I don't care if you tell me there's a tornado warning, I go shelter in place or whatever, that 10 extra minutes of having to go do something. I mean, we were very fortunate that we lost no lives. I, I was down there with Commissioner Moran before any of the real cleanup started. And, that debris field down there was just enormous. And, and the fact that nobody was killed is mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. I mean, so I'm just thinking in the future, we may not be so lucky. So f warning is gonna be, I think, the was critical this issue. The, was this the first true tornado we've had in the county? I can't remember another. 1976 uh, well, we had, was the We had the one at Churchill a few years ago, but it didn't touch, it was just, they saw it, but it didn't touch down. Mm -hmm. yes. I was reading the National Weather Service, 76 was the last EF2 they had on record in Queen Anne's. Yeah, Scott, and everything else been EF0 or less. Yeah, I just yeah. don't remember one. Yeah. Scott, you mentioned that this started uh, as a water spout and morphed. There was a picture in the Bay Times last week that somebody in mm -hmm. Ellendale took a picture of a water spout in approximately the same place where this... Yep. No, that was actually north of the bridge. Yeah, north. it was on the other side of the bridge. The point that I'm there making was three is on that day. That, that yeah. Nothing came yeah. of that. But uh, is there something that uh, NOAA or these weather people can suggest that... Uh, I always thought that uh, uh, tornadoes ended up as water spouts, and not water spouts turned into tornadoes. But is there some warning ahead of time if somebody sees a... Well, they they uh, they actually pushed out a tornado warning on the water spout yeah. also okay. in the affected area, uh, and it, w it was interesting because my wife was actually on the Bay Bridge when the funnel cloud formed, wow. and she <laughs> called me and she's like, "There's a funnel cloud in the Bay. Did you know that?" And I was like, "I'll oh, get out of here. You're full of it. You don't know what you're talking about." And then almost immediately upon her saying that, the warning came up on the TV and my phone went off. So the weather service did put it out. Well, I mean, if there's something going on in that area, either the, because of geography or the bay temperature or some reasoning that could give us some clue that might 
give us a little bit more time. Maybe there's something to look into. I don't know. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be continually working with the Weather Service and through the state emergency management uh, agency. Right. We'll be Bay working Times, with the Weather Service. You know, showed a water spout that somebody took a picture from Ellendale and the thing that we suffered last Monday, uh, you know, uh, over the weekend, whatever, came right through the same general area, mm -hmm. only swinging a little bit to the to the north. And that one didn't even come ashore, I don't think. Very good. Yeah. I'd, I'd just like to say one quick thank you. I mean, thank you. Training pays off. I'm a firm believer in training. Yeah. And, you know, a well-oiled machine needs to, these training exercises that you do. And I'd, I'd like to thank Anne Arundel County for their uh, you know, bringing over their equipment for you guys to use. I think that was, uh, you know, something huge. And the state of Maryland, the governor, I mean, you had every agency there by, by 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning, right. and uh, it was going on. Uh, the only question I really had was, how scared were you when the door wasn't closed and you went up in that helicopter? <laughs> I kept waiting to go, when is he going to pull out that camera? When is he going to pull out that camera? Well, I don't luckily, want to hear the, the next question. <laughs> well, luckily, the That's lieutenant right. governor was sitting on the other side, and they, they had the thing turned this way the whole time so he could see what was going on. Okay. So I was more protected than he was. All right, good. <laughs> thank well, you. Thank I, you. Also, I, we do need to thank Public Works because the Public Works Road crew is what got you guys in there, you know, besides well, the volunteers. So and they, they're still on there. And they yes. really came out and, and really busted. So a lot of times, the, public they, works they, they, they get overlooked, but they came Public in. Works and Parks were huge. So 